The floor is yours. Um, so I'm Lea Moseso. I'm a designer, and I'm going to tell you about a qualitative study I did on software, smartphone software obsolescence with uh, the team of the Digital Limits uh, Research Project, which is Limit Numérique in French. So first, I'd like to do a little overview of the environmental impacts of the digital sector and just to focus on the extraction and manufacturing phase. Um, because according to the ADEM, which is the French, um, the French Agency for Ecological Transition, uh, um, almost 80% of GHG emissions come from the manufacturing phase. And also to uh, produce all the material, we need a lot of... Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> we need a lot of material, and some are uh, becoming scarce, and we need mines which have um, strong social and ecological impacts. So uh, the extraction and manufacturing phase is, the, I think, the most important phase to focus on. And we focused on smartphones because it's the emblematic object of the digital sector. Uh, we replace them every 2.5 years in France. So what... Uh, happens to them when we replace them. Some of them are reused, about a third of them, um, and it allows to extend their total use to 3.5 years. And the others, I put it to landfills or recycled, but recycling also needs a lot of resources, infrastructures, and we can't recycle a lot of materials uh, contained in the smartphones. So, for us, it's very important to extend the life of smartphones and preserve the uh, hardware. And for that, there's repair. And there are um, more studies on hardware than on software repairs. Uh, so that's why we focus on software obsolescence. And according to a French government report, 20% of replacements are due to software issues or software obsolescence. And uh, usually in those reports, uh, it's um, with a very technical or legal point of view and only talking about updates. But we know the software issues are not just updates. And that's why uh, we did an interview-based study on uh, software issues, from not from a technical point of view, but from a, so, um, a usage point of view which means we don't try to understand technically why a bug occurred, but uh, the social consequences of this bug. And so we focused on software obsolescence and also the links between software and hardware issues. So our research questions were, what are software obsolescence factors and how they are felt and experienced? How are obsolescence factors entangled? And what strategies do users develop in order to prolong their device's life? And we tried to answer those three questions uh, by doing uh, uh, 18 interviews and with rather expert profiles. And we, it allowed us to have some interesting results, as we will see later. Um, so to have the most complete description of the experience of obsolescence, I did a bingo card. And on each box, I put one issue that can be encountered. And I asked people to go through all the boxes and tell me about their experience with these issues. And it allows them to remember some uh, problems that they encountered may, uh, maybe many years ago, and also to focus on an accumulation of issues instead of focusing just on uh, like the issue that triggered the replacement. And I also asked them to put the encountered issues on a graph to have a chronology and to have uh, also the influence of each issue on the replacement of their devices. So now I'm going to talk a bit more about the results. Um, I identified three main factors encountered among all the information I got. So storage saturation, updates, and malfunctions. I don't have time to go into any detail, but don't hesitate to ask me questions about it. And uh, I also saw what I call obsolescence path. So it's uh, the links between the different factors and the entanglement of uh, factors that lead to the replacement in the end. And it can be uh, software 
factors, but also hardware ones and social ones and uh, factors that come from outside decisions from the manufacturers. Um, and uh, we can see that at the end of these paths, there's, some, uh, there's often uh, social consequences, which means that um, it's, uh, often, it, it, sometimes it's not the issue in itself that leads to the replacement, but the social consequences of this issue. And also the accumulation of these factors uh, discourages repair because uh, people say it's not worth it to repair my phone. And then I also observed strategies used by informants to extend the use of their smartphones. So there were four strategies. The first one is repair and maintenance. It can be cleaning practices, and it can also be software repair practices, like uh, rebooting the phone, which was used for a lot of different reasons. Also uh, using the settings, for example, one informant had to uh, disable the notifications because uh, it was a, an issue for him. And uh, updates that solve a, a, re a problem that came with the previous update. The second strategy is bypassing. So it's finding kind of a backdoor way to use a function that's uh, unavailable. It can be through apps and APKs and alternative OSs. It can be through hijacking of apps, so using an app not for uh, the initial reason why the app is here for. For example, one informant used Snapchat to take pictures because uh, the camera was only working on Snapchat with the front camera. And um, I also observed one person who modified the source code of his phone uh, to be able to unlock the phone with the volume buttons instead of the power button, which was broken. The third strategy is the extension. So it's adding uh, an object to the phone to be able to continue using it without changing too much their habits. It can be battery extensions and storage extensions like SD cards or online storage. And the, the last strategy is giving up. So it's when you recognize a certain value in your phone and you, you're ready to make trade-offs to be able to continue using it dis despite the issues. So it can be giving up some applications and features that are not working anymore. It can be changing their habits. For example, one informant had to uh, do a rotation of three or four applications because he didn't have enough storage space to add them all at the same time. Um, then I also observed an overall decrease in usage of the phones, for example, when uh, it's too slow. And some informants told me that it was a positive effect because uh, they didn't use their phone as much as before. And also some people told me that they wanted to fully give up the smartphone and use a dumb phone instead. But here uh, they always faced their dependencies on the smartphone. For example, uh, this informant needed WhatsApp or Signal to communicate with uh, people in other countries, and he can't have these applications without a smartphone. And finally, when you give up some usage, uh, there are usage transfers to other objects like computers or to people around you, and it creates dependencies and responsibilities. So, of course, there are a lot of limits to all these strategies, and I don't have uh, time to go through every detail. So, to conclude, uh, the contributions of this work uh, are to have identified the feelings and experiences of software obsolescence, and not just with the technical point of view. Uh, also, to have uh, seen the various factors and their entanglement and the accumulation of different types of factors, and uh, the strategies used by people to extend their life of smartphone. Thank you.